For months, fishers of eastern Baltic cities like Kołobrzeg in Poland couldn't leave port. The European Union banned catching eastern Baltic cod to restore its collapsing stocks and ensure the long-term future of fisheries. Crews and owners of cod trawlers are directly affected. After seven years of fishing in Norway, Tomasz Wojciechowicz recently returned to Poland, hoping to build business in his homeland. My trawler, all the equipment, the infrastructure, the whole budget we had, all that was intended for cod fishing. Now everything has changed. We can no longer fish at all, and it's unclear when we'll be able to fish again, or what shall we do instead of fishing cod. Co zrobić w zamian za tego dorsza? Even accidental bycatch of cod was banned until September, so vessels targeting other Baltic species like flatfish, herring or sprat couldn't go out to sea either. Local fishers say they didn't have time to prepare, having learned of these restrictions only two days before they took effect in early June. For us, this is like a knife in the back. We missed the best herring season this year, the biggest fishing months on May, June and July. And we had to wait through most of that period at the port due to cod protection measures. We will be able to fish for herring for the remainder of the year, but the lower volumes of the catches won't make that economically profitable. Cod is the most popular white fish in Europe and the most valuable local species. This factory built with EU support was processing 1,500 tonnes of it a year. Today, it has to import cod from Norway, operating at a small fraction of its capacity. This, combined with COVID impact on the markets, caused it to lay off almost half of its workers, going from 75 down to 43 employees. What frightens us most is that by the time things return to normal, we will no longer have any workers left able to process Baltic cod. With distribution chains broken, we won't be able to sell our product. Small shipyards that service the entire fishing fleet will shut down, and we'll have trouble repairing nets, as all the net makers will be gone. So even here, at our local market, instead of Baltic cod, we'll only have cod from the Atlantic. This small shipyard is used to build a new fishing vessel every year. Today, its hangar is empty. After learning about the fishing ban, several clients cancelled their orders. The owners of the shipyard say they consider themselves a part of the fishing sector, but without any assistance to compensate for their losses, they feel abandoned by the government. I'm simply disgusted by this whole situation because we are an only exclusively fishing shipyard. 100% of our activity are services for fishermen, but we have been deprived any of the sources of aid. And since we are a small group, not a big community, we cannot manage to have our voices heard. Tourists, many coming from nearby Germany, still flood Coabseg's popular white sand beaches. But even the coastal tourism is affected by the ban that prohibits recreational as well as commercial fishing of eastern Baltic cod. The restrictions are based on scientific advice provided by the International Council for the Exploration of the Sea a network of nearly 6,000 scientists from over 700 marine institutes in 20 countries. According to their data, the catches of Eastern Baltic cod have plummeted since the 1980s, and for years they have remained within scientifically advised limits. So if there is no overfishing, then how do the scientists explain the poor shape of cod populations in the Baltic and several other European seas? Are we missing the bigger picture? Scientific surveys indicate an urgent need to rebuild eastern Baltic cod stocks before the species is extinct and to prevent further damage to the marine environment and fisheries. But what is killing the cod today seems to mostly be a result of the environment. Tens of thousands of codfish were tagged for one study looking at their age and growth. Scientists found an astonishing number of them had died of natural causes. Unfortunately, 
it turned out that the mortality was horrendously high. So out of the altogether 26,000 fish, we got 400 back. The results were that we were able to estimate the mortality, which uh, the natural mortality, not related to the fishery, but just the natural mortality, is uh, three to four times higher than the fishing mortality. Researchers from the National Institute of Aquatic Resources in Denmark say there's no consensus on why cod populations fail to reproduce. Several factors seem to be at play. Oxygen in large parts of the Baltic is depleted due to pollution. Climate change makes sea warmer, possibly pushing cod further north. And high numbers of grey seals prey on cod and spread liver parasites that affect the fish's health. So basically, nature is against cod for the time being. I do not see that that is going to change in the next decade. That's not good news for fishermen relying on cod. All we can do is preserve the cod, the places where nature is in its favor. And then we can see too, if conditions are getting better, that these preserved areas are the source for recolonization of the areas which are so far basically uninhabitable for cod because they are too warm or because there's not enough oxygen. Fishing pressure is the only factor of cod depletion that can be effectively controlled. So scientists advise continuing restrictions, including a further 70% reduction of allowed bycatch of Eastern Baltic cod next year. In the meantime, improved assessment methods and models should help explain the alarming age and size dynamics that are driving the collapse of the stocks. They are getting thinner. And what is of large concern for us is that they are having their first maturity, so they're spawning in a smaller and smaller size compared to what we saw in the beginning of the 19th. Normally, if we were only looking at the size of the cod, we would expect it would be much younger. But we can actually see that for cod above 30, 35 centimeter, that they have decreased the growth by nearly more than 50 percent compared to what we have seen in earlier years. Environmentalists hail the fishing ban, supporting decisive measures. The fishing industry criticises it, while fishers like Thomas face tough career decisions. To me, the situation looks like if nothing changes, I'm going to lay off my entire crew here. And to pay off the loan on my boat, I'll have to return to Norway and keep fishing for cod there. 